Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we are here for part 8, also our final part of our B6385 Sew Along. So we're finishing our coat today guys and it's so exciting. <laughs> Make sure you stay tuned until the very end because I will actually I have footage of my sister actually in her new coat at the very end So if you'd like to see all the twirls that go along with that make sure you tune in to the very end of the video But today we're just doing some hand sewing I'm showing you how to hand sew on a button and creating a thread shank because um, that is something you need to do for thicker weighted um, Coat fabrics basically um, just so that the button has room to move and to get, actually get into the buttonhole And this would go for a machine made buttonhole or a bound buttonhole so basically anything with the thicker fabrics where you need the button to be able to get up and out <laughs> of the buttonhole. Okay, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer any of those. And if you're willing and able, I would love to have, um, I have a, a virtual, I would love to have, I do have a virtual tip jar. I mean, if you would like to add to it. <laughs> All the money that I do uh, get from that does go right back into the channel. It goes into editing software, supplies, materials, lighting, all that kind of stuff that help me make the best um, videos that I can, sew alongs, tutorials, that kind of thing is really the main stuff. Um, the ones that I have to be up close and personal <laughs> to do the filming. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this sew along. Next week, we'll be doing a tutorial, and then we'll be starting our next sew along, and I don't know what that will be yet, so stay tuned. <laughs> okay, guys, have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, let's finish this coat today. What do y'all say? Okay, clearly, she's looking very lumpy. Um, here, I'm going to walk around here. She's looking very, very lumpy through here, um, but that's also because we don't have... Yeah, or I mean, you know, this is like very <laughs> loosey goosey here still. Um, you know, I've attached the up here bound buttonhole, but we still need to do the rest of these. But I'm going to wait and do that um, when I'm sewing the buttons on, honestly. Um, I may do that before I top stitch. So I will secure my bound buttonholes, then we'll top stitch the coat. But before we do any of that, we need to attach lining to the sleeves, look how fluffy it is, um, and to the hem, which is what we're gonna be doing today. Um, and I also wanted to talk about, I'm gonna be finishing off, I'm gonna talk about a couple of different ways that you can finish off the hem, and I'll go ahead and talk about that now. One thing you can do, and especially with this coat, because it has so many seams that go all the way across, if you have a wool that is pretty stiff, you can just um, stitch in the ditch a little bit through the hem once the lining's been attached, but stitch through the, through the ditch um, on all those seams, and that will probably keep the hem up. Um, also, at the sleeve, you can just stitch in the ditch in those two seam lines, and that should keep the sleeve up. If you have a um, coat fabric that maybe you had to interline, and so it's just a little bit thinner and a little bit drapier, and there's a chance, you know, that it could kind of fall out a little bit as time goes on, because the lining's not gonna hold the hem up, um, you can catch stitch the hem. Now, I'm not going to show how to do that in the sew along, but I am going to do a tutorial on that after the sew along is over. So, um, I guess by the time you're watching this, I'll be doing it next week because um, I'm going to be doing other coats where I do want to do that treatment. Or, what I'm going to do, just because I want the look, I think if I wanted an invisible hem on this fabric, I could definitely just tack into the uh, seam allowances and it would be fine. But I really want the look of the... Um, top stitching. So I'm going to top stitch all the way around, down, um, and around the hem and also around the hems of the sleeves just because I want that look. So to kind of match my pockets here, I just really like how that turned out. So that is the plan for today. So let's get this aligning attached. All right. Before we get going on this coat um, and putting this lining in, you need to remember which sleeve you left your, you put your basting stitches in. Mine is the left one, I made note. So the first thing we're going to do is determine which seam I left open. I think it was, I think it might've been this. Um, I think it was this one, yeah, okay. And you can tell just by pulling. I mean, you can very easily see that those are basting stitches. All right, so we're going to unpick our basting stitches because we're going to need a hole in this sleeve. 
And if you recall, I left a nice big opening. I don't want to tear it down too much, but you know, if those basting stitches will give away, that's fine. And again, I normally wouldn't leave this big of a hole, but yeah. But this is a lot of coat. <laughs> All right, so we want that hole. This is gonna actually get um, pinched together at the end and we will top stitch that um, when all is said and done. So you can go ahead and pick out your little threads, get that all kind of cleaned up a little bit. But this, um, also top stitching that if you ever need to get back into the coat to repair any lining or, you know, need to do any alterations, if you gain, lose weight, whatever, um, it's nice to leave yourself a little door that makes it really easy to get in and out of. When I was, my mom's um, blazer, Jessica blazer that I made her, uh, the hem was falling out a little bit. So I had to go back in and catch stitch that up, which I should have done from the beginning, but um, I didn't. That was an example of one where I had just stitched in the um, seam allowances because there are a lot of seams there at the hem, but it just wasn't enough in the back. So there at the vent, it was starting to dip. So I just went in and just catched it to the whole hem and now it looks nice and crisp again. Um, but that was a wool crepe, which is very, it's drapey. Okay, so I've got my lining sleeves are just pulled out. Um, they're just, you know, loosey goosey here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take the lining of our coat and we're basically turning things inside out now. We're gonna uh, pull it out and around because we want the bottom of our hem of our lining to match up right sides together with the hem of our coat. So this is where things are gonna really get, this is why I haven't done the bound buttonholes yet because I wanted to be able to easily get in here to the coat. Also, you're basically gonna be just jumbling your coat up into the lining and it's gonna be a bag, which is why it's called bagging a lining. So I'm just kind of stuffing, <laughs> you know, just play around with this. It's, the hem is not confusing, you know, getting everything lined up, although I say that this is a lot of coat. Okay, there's the hem, obviously, you want that hem um, unfolded. We will do the sleeve lining next. All right, so I've got my hem. There's that little excess there. So now what we're gonna do, now when I was pressing this, I went ahead and pressed the seam allowance of this lining. I'm just gonna line that pressed line up to that seam line there. That's gonna get hand stitched closed when we're all said and done. So now we're just lining up this um, hem and I'm just going to pin, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm debating. So the lining for this, the lining pieces are the same length as the coat pieces for the body of the coat. It's not that way for the sleeves because those do get sealed all the way up. But it is for the body of the coat because she wants you to just take a deeper hem on the lining because it for it's um, free from the coat. Uh, it does not attach at the bottom, but I am not doing that. I am bagging the lining. So one thing you could do is kind of just scooch your lining up a little bit because um, we're going to be sewing with the um, coat up. Not too much, though, because you don't want it to catch. And since my fabric is so thick, I think that I might not even have that issue much. So I may just scooch it up like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, just a little bit. You know what, I may, I may be sewing with the jacket down because I 
feel like there's more. I'm going to have some to ease in, which is weird. Because the pieces should be identical. But that's the beauty of sewing. You can do whatever you want. I may do that. Okay, now remember when I mentioned about the bottom that I may need to let this pleat out? I think I'm going to have to let the pleat out. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to let the pleat out. I'm going to go ahead and pin both sides of the back panel. But yeah, there's a lot that's going to happen. Well, we'll try it. We'll try it. But that's going to be a lot that's going to have to be eased. We may need to let that out. <laughs> and again, this is just me going rogue from the pattern because I wanted a bag lining. But that is my favorite. I just, I don't know, I feel, it feels more professional to me. I hate free swinging linings. Personal preference. Okay, and then we're... that facing out a little bit more. I do have, there's a very large, I mean, this facing's a very large facing. Okay. All right. So now I am going to sew Okay, let me think this through just a second. I think I want this all the way. No, I don't. Okay, because we have everything pressed towards the lining, I'm actually gonna sew this with this pressed to the side. On both sides. Let's all fold that. Sorry, out of frame. I'm just doing the same thing over here, pinning it. All right. Okay. Now, typically, I would sew with the lining against the feet dogs, but I think I'm going to do it with the coat. I'm not sure why the coat has so much more fullness, but it does. So, we're just... I feel like this coat's been that way. I've had to kind of go back and forth. But that's the beauty, again, of... Use those feet dogs. Okay wedge my thigh in there. All right, let's get to sewing. And we're just sewing all the way across the bottom. And <laughs> if you could see the coat on the, you can imagine what it looks like. It is just a big mess. All right, and we're doing this at five eighths of an inch. I am at a 2.5 stitch length. I'm using my regular Guterman Mara. I still have the size 16 needle in there. And I'm gonna go slow just because there's a good chance that my coat is gonna fall. And you'll notice it looks like I'm sewing at um, two centimeters, which would be three quarters of an inch, but that's because I'm pushing my lining over. But I can feel my coating underneath it, so. All right, here we're coming to that back piece. I would like to be able to ease it though, because I just think that might help because this is kind of a, there's a little bit of a curve here. In fact, the instructions for this have you easing that um, hem up into itself. Oh, folks, I think we're gonna do it. I tell you, this Melton has been phenomenal for easing. I do want to make sure all of those 
Seam allowances stay pressed open. Okay, so now we, <laughs> oh, I don't want to do it. It's going to be a mess. Okay, I also want to point out, you're still going to have a hole here at the sides. We will put those back together by hand, so don't worry about those right now. Okay, we are now going to birth the coat through the hole we left in the sleeve. So... Number one is pulling your sleeves out and figuring out which sleeve is which here. Nope, of course I did not grab the right one. <laughs> it's not that one. Um, all right, there's the sleeve. There's my big old hole. So now we're just gonna take our time and pull the coat through this hole. Now I realize that our sleeves are not yet hemmed. That's okay. We're gonna do that here in just a second. It's much easier to get the coat all the way through. Then we're gonna do our sleeves. I also want to talk about some areas where you can tack your coat if you feel like you need to. And I mean, it's never easy pulling an entire coat through the hole of the lining, but I feel like most other coating fabrics <laughs> are going to be fine. I may um, get some exercise minutes in on my Apple Watch doing this. And you want to be careful because you don't want to rip any of your lining. Now, I'm using a silk jacquard um, tie silk lining, which is pretty heavy duty, which is one of the reasons whew, I picked it for this coat. But even still, I've done all this work. I also would like to point out, if you are following along on Vlogmas, I did these press-on nail manicures, this, this um, impress by Kiss. Oh, I've got some glue attaching to fuzzies. But I have been using my fingernails a ton, trying to pull things through holes, <laughs> and not a single thing has popped off. I'm super impressed. It's also hard to kind of tell when everything is pulled through. <laughs> oh, we did it. Yay. Okay. The amount of fluff and strings that I have attached to this coat is ridiculous. All right. Look at that. That is the hem right there. Now we've got this big hole right here, but that's okay. We are just going to wrap that up like so. Well, we may need to do. That. And then all of that, just get that all tucked in. All of that is gonna get slip stitched, okay? But we'll finish that off in a little bit. Do our sleeves first. But I will do that and then here's Oh, I will do that before um, 
I'm basically taking this and pushing that in just like if it were sewn, that seam allowance. And then that's going to get, that jump pleat's going to get pulled down, but it'll get slip stitched like so. But again, we'll do that in a minute. Okay. My lining's in. All right. Next step is we're going to take our lining sleeves and push them through our actual sleeves. So this is the whole this sleeve we just went through. So just kind of turn that right side out. Actually, we don't need to put this one in yet because the hole. So I've pushed my um, lining sleeve into the sleeve of the coat. I'm going to put you over here so that we can do this together and you can see Okay, so what we're gonna do, I need pins. This is bagging a lining, if you've ever done that before. Everything up here. Okay, so I'm going to go, so this is my sleeve here. I just feel like, <laughs> I don't know what you feel to see. Okay, so here's my sleeve and we've got the hole and I haven't pushed this one into the coat yet. But I'm going to go into this sleeve. Well, here. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so here's the other sleeve. I'm going to put my arm in here and make sure that my lining is not twisted. Okay? So I'm making sure that the lining's not twisted. I'm going to pull the lining kind of out through. You know, I've got this pressed up. And I'm going to pick one of those seams. And we want to match. See? It's twisted. This is an important step because you don't want to accidentally sew your lining in all twisty. So that you like, you know, short sheet your bed basically. Not what we're going for. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this through and I'm matching my seams. You see the seam there and the seam here. And I'm just going to fold that over. So that's how it's going to be sewn when all is said and done. So this is just going to be a good reference point. So I'm just going to put a pin in here temporarily because this can get really confusing when you turn everything inside out. So I have it pinned. My line, oh, sorry, stay in frame. So I've pinned my lining to my um, coat here. I just turned it back over itself the way that it would look once it's sewn. Now I'm going to go in through the hole here in this sleeve and I'm going to travel through the back of the coat and now I'm going this is my sleeve so my hand is going between this the lining and the sleeve but I want to grab that point that I pinned we're going to grab that and then pull it all back through this hole. Which is difficult. I mean, we have a tailored sleeve here, so there's a lot going on in the sleeve. Okay, so we're gonna pull it through. And here we have our reference point that we have pinned, okay? So now I'm going to unpin it, but keep my thumb there. And I'm gonna pull this down and around. So we want our raw edges to match up there at that seam, right there. And I'm gonna undo, unfold that, my uh, hem of my sleeve. And now we're just going to place pins. So now our sleeve lining and our sleeve are right sides together. And this feels a little weird when you're sewing. 
And again, I think I'm going to sew with my coat against the feed dogs. Normally I would do the lining, but I... And I'm going to match up both of my seams here. And pop pins in. Okay. So it becomes... Let me pull this out so you can kind of see it a little bit better. It becomes this weird, like, circle, basically. But we're just wanting to match up our raw edges. And so I'm going to put this down um, and just sew all the way around. So we're sewing, you know, all the way around like this. So it's, it's a weird, it's a weird circle, but that's how we're sewing it. So I'm going to put you in front of the machine now and we'll do that. Okay. So I'm just going to slide this under and we are, um, I'm matching my raw edges this time because this, uh, sleeve lining has already been shortened. Okay. And then we're just going to slowly go all the way around the uh, cuff of the sleeve, basically. Oh, and I accidentally unthreaded my machine because I've got so many layers of coat. All right, so then once you've sewn, it looks like this, basically. Okay. So you'll be doing this to the other sleeve as well, which, I mean, it's the same, it's the same principle. Um, but we're going to shove this sleeve back into place, and I'm going to show you. There's a couple places where you can tack it, just to make sure. Uh, find the sleeve. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes it helps to pull it through from the outside of the coat. Oh my gosh, this um, lining fabric is getting very, is shedding very, rather badly here. And we've already pre-pressed that hem, so it usually falls into place beautifully. Case in point, look at that. Doesn't that look lovely? Now again, we could catch stitch, and I'll show you that um, in a tutorial next week. Um, or you could just stitch in the ditch from the right side at that seam, both those seams to keep that up. But again, I'm going to be top stitching mine. Another thing that you can do if you'd like, now we've got a ton of um, shoulder support and shoulder pad. Oops, sorry, I'm hitting the camera and moving it. Um, support here. So I, would, I wouldn't really think that tacking it at the top is going to be any good. But if you wanted to go into the coat and um, tack your seam allowances together under here, sometimes that can help keep the uh, lining from pulling on the sleeve as well and just keeps everything in. Again, I'm top stitching my coat, so I'm not too worried about that. But you can definitely, um, you know, go back in through the hole. Right now, this hole in this sleeve is still open, so you can go back in and just tack those seam allowances of the lining and the coat, either by hand or um, by machine. I've also known some people that just will wrap the seam allowance like this and sew through all layers just for like an inch there at the underarm seam. Um, and it just kind of keeps that. In fact, maybe we'll do that. It just keeps the, um, you just got to make sure everything is nice and flat. 
um, and that your seam lines there are, are matched up and I can feel them, but you can, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not gonna do that. You can go ahead through and top stitch. I think that's gonna get too thick. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that, but you can. <laughs> so those are a little tips there. Um, before I go to the other sleeve, I think I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch my sleeve. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna pull my sleeve inside out. Ugh. All right, so there it is, all nice. And there should be some wiggle room there, you know, a little bit of a jump pleat. But we're just gonna go over here and do some top stitching. We will top stitch the front of the jacket as well, but not yet. Um, I thought that that 3 eighths of an inch looked really nice. I'm gonna start and stop here at a seam. Look at that on the outs from the outside. <laughs> this is why coats need to be professionally pressed when all is said and done because you turn things in and out and all the way around. All right, so there is that sleeve. Oh, I think that looks beautiful. I really like the top stitching on this very lofty fabric. Okay. So next, what we're going to do is um, go ahead and do your the rest of your bound buttonholes. If you need a refresh on how to do that, last week's video, I showed you how to finish off your bound buttonholes here on the back. So go ahead and do that. Now is the time for that. And then um, I'll meet you back here. And we're going to, um, let's see what else we have to do. We need to, we'll do the um, handwork to close this up. And then we'll top stitch and then everything will just need a good press. <laughs> so close your bound buttonholes and I'll meet you right back here. All right, so now that we, um, I have finished my bound buttonholes, um, I have finished, you know, slip stitching those and I gave the front a nice press. Um, we're gonna be top stitching. This fabric is so lofty. I feel like top stitching is gonna be the best thing to do for the fronts of these of this coat um, and for the hem. Just It's just a super lofty fabric. <laughs> How many times can I say that? All right, so now we need to fix this area here that's going to be um, the hole, basically. Uh, what you want to do is basically you're just going to boop, pop it in like so. If you need to trim out any um, bulk, you definitely can. But basically what we're doing is we are just going to slip stitch this closed. Okay, and we're gonna slip stitch the whole of the lining closed and everything is gonna get all nice and closed up. I have a milliner's needle just because they're longer and I have done a double thing of thread through here. I've actually found with this fabric ugh, that that is the best. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bury a knot here. get that all tucked in all right and then I'm just going to slip stitch so we're just going to catch some of the fold and then we're going to catch into the coat here <laughs> there's a lot of bulk because my fabric is very bulky oops It's malleable, but bulky. So this isn't a real quick, uh, <laughs> you know, take a couple stitches at once. And I keep having to snug that up. The same with the back of the buttonholes. So 
Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. I have also bent the Living Daylights out of this needle. So once this project is over, this needle will be done. <laughs> I will also give this a really good press and a hit with the clapper. Um, when I'm finished. All right, we're coming up on the lining. Okay, so you you may have some excess because there's a jump pleat there. Don't forget about that jump pleat. So you'll just wanna push down that lining. So now I can start to catch the lining in there. Let's make it a little easier. You can definitely um, pin. There we go. Okay. And maybe one more. Uh oh. I tell you, doing hand stitching with a tripod in your lap. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Sometimes you are, uh, look, I'm trying to knot, on, knot off before I really want to knot off. Hold on, no, don't. Don't do that yet. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, and I think we're up here at the top, so I'll do one more stitch, and then I will tie off. Alright, so you'll just do that on both sides, and then, um, yeah, do that on both sides, give the whole, I'm going to give the whole perimeter of my coat a good press, and then I'll come back and we are going to top stitch, close up the hole in our lining, and then we'll attach our buttons, we're almost done. Alright, giving everything a good press, now we are going to close up. Make sure you're all finished inside there. You've tacked everything you want to tack. Now we're going to um, uh, close up our sleeve lining. And I literally just pinch these pressed edges together. And we're just going to top stitch, basically. Um, but we're going to do that first. And then I'm going to top stitch the body of my coat. And then we just have the buttons. And I'm going to show you... Um, especially with the fabric that I'm using, I'm definitely going to have to give my button a shank, even though my buttons are not shank buttons. So we're going to show you how to do that. And we're just basically edge stitching along the seam to close it up. And this makes it really easy to find and to get back inside the coat if you ever need to. Just like that. All right, so now I'm put the sleeve back in. <laughs> Folks, I'm not gonna need to work out after this. This is, woohoo. All right. Okay, just gonna give everything a good fluff. All right, so we are going, or I, I don't know what 
I mean, you can do whatever you want for your own coat, but I am going to um, top stitch all the way around. So I'm actually gonna start here at my center back panel, which is right here. And I'm going to go three eighths of an inch because I thought that that looked nice. And I'm gonna be very careful that I am not catching my lining into this. Uh, if any of it's, you know, it could, and not the necessarily dipping down, but if it, you know, it's, it could just be, you know, get easily getting under the presser foot is what I'm trying to say. Good gracious. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to raise my stitch length just to give it a little more pizzazz. So I'm going up to a three millimeter stitch length. Uh, let's go. Now I do want to point out I am top stitching from the from the front on top, <laughs> which is what you're supposed to do. But because, especially the body of my coat, that is not the completely interfaced piece. Got one more stitch. Um, it can get wonky pretty easily. So just go slow. Make sure. Oh, look at that corner. Why does that make me so happy? Hold on, you'll see it in a second when it comes back through the presser foot. But I just want things to feed through evenly. Look at that. <gasps> Why does that make me so happy? That's such a, that poofy corner. It just makes me <laughs> so happy. I'm also making sure, um, so this I'm working on the side where the buttons will go. I'm also making sure that that um, facing, that seam line isn't poking through on the top. Now, when I get up here to the collar, hold on, I'll wait till I'm in frame better. You see how there's a little bit of a jog there? Um, technically, that's probably supposed to be flush, but there is a little jog there. And instead of trying to fudge that, I'm just gonna honor it and I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna do a little jog so that it doesn't look like I'm trying one more. Yeah. Mm, one more stitch. Oh, it's going to give me another poofy corner. Anyway, I kind of like the way that that looks, that little jog there, too. Just adds a little something-something. That's kind of up to you. But because of the thickness there, um, and even though I pulled so much out of that seam, um, it's just really thick fabric. Don't get your sleeve in the way. <laughs> Because it does the same thing over here, too. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to go slow because now... We are gonna be in bound buttonhole territory and there could be quite a bit of bulk and we don't wanna accidentally bust a needle. I also counted on the other side how many stitches Ugh, I went over. Whew, yeah, that is thick through there, okay.
So again, I'm just going to be making sure that this front side looks nice. Uh, creep out on me a little bit. Sorry. Okay, so now it's just time um, to put on our buttons. So I just want, you need to go mark your buttons. And what I like to do is, manhandle this coat, <laughs> is I like to put my wrong sides together. So my wrong sides together and then... Um, mark through the coat where I want it to go. And I'm gonna mark, because um, when you think when it gets buttoned, it's gonna slide into the furthest area here. Um, so you want it, you know, you don't wanna put it too close here because then it won't be at center front. But this is pretty thick fabric, so I think I'm just going to stick a pin pretty much through the middle of each of these buttonholes. But I'm just going to line them up um, and stick it through and then mark it with a uh, friction pin, the erasable pin. Um, because even if it doesn't erase all the way, a button is going to be over that. So I'm just going to go do that. I'm going to mark all five of my buttonholes, and then we'll come back here and sew those on. Okay, our last step is going to be sewing buttons on. I've sewn four of the five on. And the idea, where I'm going to be showing you how to give them a thread shank. You want them loose enough, especially with the bound buttonholes, that they can easily get through, but then also so they are sitting on top um, of that buttonhole and not, you know, smooshing it down because then that can distort the front of the coat and yada, yada, yada. So even if you're not using bound buttonholes, if you're using a thicker wool coating, this is the best way to sew on a button, even if it does have a shank on the back. Um, these do not, but um, even if it does, okay? So I'm going to show you how I do this. Now, a lot of purists do not put any knots in their sewing. I know this. I do. I just think, I feel like it just keeps the thread behaving a little better. But do what you want. Again, um, I have got my milliner's needle threaded with four strands of thread. So I've put, you know, a piece of thread twice through there and then doubled it up. And I do have a knot. You're also going to need your button and a toothpick. <laughs> 
and you'll see why in a second. Now you can see that I've marked um, my button placement and I, again, just put the fronts together, wrong sides together and stuck a pin through the um, middle of the bound buttonhole and then just made sure that they were all in line together. They are, so now we're ready to sew on the button. Now, I'm going to first take a little bite. I'm not going through all the layers. I'm really just kind of going through the top layer just to get my um, threads started. So there's that ugly knot. So I'm just gonna trim off a lot of those little extra threads there. Now this is under the button, so it doesn't really matter, but you know, whatever. <laughs> all right, now you can see I've got like a little groove there that the needle goes through. So I'm gonna go through my button However that looks to you. Oh, look at that. I've managed to knot my thread without even sewing with it yet. Okay, hold on here. Okay. Now, the name of the game, so I've got just my thread through my button. The name of the game here is to really try and keep your um, thread organized and going through kind of about the same spot. So now I'm going to go all the way through to the back. I'm going to pull it tight because now that we are around to the back, I'm sticking a toothpick here and we're going to stitch around it. So now I'm going to go back up to the front and I want to kind of come out somewhat. I'm going to zoom in on this. Hold on. I want you guys to be able to really see what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm going to try and come through as close sorry to that as possible and you can pull tight at this point that's fine i'm going to go through that button spot and then i'm going to come down and i want to come down yeah i want to come down on this side of the toothpick so that was once, this is twice, oh, it's not quite close enough. You want them all kind of close. My needle's also bent from this coat. This needle will be going into the trash as soon as <laughs> it has been loved, well loved with this coat. Go slowly so that you don't get any thread nests. There's nothing worse and I know that I could use beeswax and um, all sorts of different products to help with that, but. Okay, so now. Go through the button. Doop. Just gonna give my thread some love there. I wanna make sure Yep, going through the right side there. Okay. So just do this like three or four times. This is gonna be my last one. Okay, so now I'm gonna come up on this side of the toothpick, again, close to my other thread, but I'm not gonna go through the button this time. This time, I'm going to pull this out and then give my, oh, sorry, stay in frame. I've pulled out my um, toothpick and I'm gonna give this button a tug. And now I'm going to wrap it one two, three, four, four times. And then I'm gonna go back down. Gosh, sorry. I'm gonna go back down. To the back side. So we have a nice little thread shank there. And then here on the back, I'm gonna go underneath this, um, kind of thread area here. 
Um, and then I'm going to go once through my loop, pull it tight, go through it again, through my loop, pull it tight, and through it again, through my loop, pull it tight, and I think one more time. And now I'm going to knot it, which I'm going to go twice through my loop. Once through my loop, twice through my loop, pull it tight, and then I'm going to bury the um, tail, which means I'm just going to go down, arbitrarily come out somewhere, and then snip it close to the fabric, and that'll disappear. Okay. And then on the front, you have a nice loosey goosey button. And there you go, guys, our coat is finished. Let's go take a look at it on the mannequin. All right, so there is the finished coat. She's a little wrinkly, she needs a good press. <laughs> but you saw how many times we had her in and out, in and out. Um, so I'm gonna give her a good press and then I'll show it to you on my sister. Um, oh, also this pattern does call for a snap up here. Um, where you can, uh, like I hate just a sewn snap right up there. My sister did not want that because she did not want a snap showing. Um, and she said she will never wear it buttoned all the way up. So she just didn't want that snap showing. So I did opted not to put that on there because um, my sister didn't want it. I love the top stitching. I think it's just perfect on the front of that coat. I love the buttons that she picked. And I think after a good press, we should be looking pretty good. It also needs a good lint roll. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to show it to you on her, and I will um, hope you guys have enjoyed this so long, and I see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.